Thank you. Um, so I'm going to split my talk into two bits um, this morning. Um, first of all, I just want to give everyone an update on um, the work we've been doing with the, the Greenwich Frogs and the monitoring that we've been doing there. Um, for those of you that are new today, um, the Greenwich Frog Group's um, been running since 2010, I think. I don't know why I'm looking at Elliot for this. <laughs> um, yeah, and we've been going down to the um, foreshore at Greenwich um, almost every month since then. Um, monitoring it, as, as um, Elliot said, it's one of our most rapidly eroding sites. Um, and um, the um, prior to the repair work, early, um, this time last year, well, a bit later in the year last year, um, we did quite a lot of monitoring to make sure we recorded everything um, before that was all covered up. Um, but also we knew from the experiences at the tower that um, that work would cause um, erosion in other areas of the foreshore and just change the, the kind of um, dispersal of sediment, as it's called, um, um, once it was done. So we knew that our work would continue. Um, so there's some... Sad news and some happy news, as the oyster shells tell us. <laughs> um, just a little bit of an update for those of you that are following the progress of the shopping trolley at Greenwich. <laughs> um, which is, there is a blog about this on, on the TDP webpage. Um, there's a, a shopping trolley buried in the foreshore, looking almost like it was contemporary with the Tudor jetty at Greenwich, but I suspect was left behind by a mudlarker in the 1980s. Um, maybe um, 1990s. Um, it has pretty much, over the last um, 10 years that we've been going to Greenwich, we've been watching it erode out of the foreshore. Um, it has now pretty much disintegrated. It was helped along its way towards the end of its life by some enthusiastic children. Um, and this one wheel, sad wheel, sitting by itself on the foreshore, I think is all that remains of it now. So, so long shopping trolley. Um, but it has been a very useful erosion marker for us um, over the years at Greenwich. Um, so yeah, the erosion continues. Um, so this is us um, during the fieldwork um, last year, and we did concentrate on the on the jetty at Greenwich. Um, the jetty runs um, from in front of the old Royal Naval College out into the river um, for quite some distance, um, and has been the focus of a lot of our fieldwork at Greenwich. I mean. Um, it's a substantial foreshore structure, um, probably relating to the Tudor Palace at Greenwich. Um, early next year, I'll be doing a, um, one of our TDP um, community lectures on Greenwich and the work at Greenwich, so there will be much more information about the jetty there. Um, the, the erosion is continuing on the jetty. It's um, been damaged quite substantially by erosion over the years. Um, but what I really wanted to talk about today is some of the other areas of the site um, and what's been happening there. Um, some of you will remember this um, cruciform wooden structure that's a little bit upstream from the jetty. Um, not entirely sure what it's for. Um, I think it was probably about four years ago, five years ago, we first started to see it and we cleaned the gravel back a bit to reveal it. Um, to show you the rate of erosion, it's now being undercut at the front. You can see the damage, the wood... Here, when we first uncovered this, this looked like it would be made yesterday. It was lovely and square and very fresh wood, very clean. And, and you can see it's now rounded and eroded um, because it's exposed all the time now. It's no longer protected by the foreshore. Um, and, it's, and you can see underneath it as well, so it's been washed out from underneath. And likewise, the drain, the, the big um, lead drain that is in the background is also um, starting to be undercut. Um, and we're seeing erosion in places where we haven't seen much erosion before. So this is up against the stairs. This area generally was fairly well covered by sand and things um, up until the point where the, the gravel bags went in. Um, and what that's revealing is there's a big chalk barge bed um, there, which is something we haven't... We've seen there's bits of chalk in that area, and we suspected there's a chalk barge bed in that area because... Um, there's one on the other side. There's two sets of stairs coming down opposite each other, and there's a chalk barge bed at the other set of stairs at the base of those. Um, but yeah, we can now see it quite clearly coming out. On top of these um, stones, which I think might have been put down as a surface to kind of strengthen the surface before they put the chalk barge bed down. I'm not sure. These loose grey stones. Um, 
higher, a bit further up, another thing that's um, started to pop out more, um, and Martin's quite pleased to see this, I think, um, it reaffirmed his theory about the drains. So this is um, in front of the area of the foreshore that we call the Bellow Bump, which is in front of the Bellow M Memorial that's on uh, up there. Um, and there's a series of drains, and we've got some plans from the Naval College that show where the drains were in this area. Um, and it's, it's really hard to see on this slide, I'm afraid. Um, but we've got an evidence up here that there was a drain in the river wall that's been re-blocked up at some point. Um, but what we've uh, started to be revealed is this brick, um, two parallel bits of brick coming out here, which are in a line with that at an angle, and they um, slope down towards where we know there are other drains lower down on the foreshore. So this is kind of the connecting piece that we've been missing up until now. Um, so prior to the um, uh, um, rock armour going in, we did um, go for several monitoring visits. And, and this is one of the, the last features. Greenwich is, is one of those sites that's always giving um, and features pop, new features popping out all the time. I have no idea what this is, and it's really confusing. Um, so we've got a base plate coming at an angle um, underneath the river wall here. And then we've had... These lines of timbers, there's actually two lines of timbers running out um, into the river. Because it's on a different alignment to the river wall, um, it does seem to suggest it's earlier than the current layout of the old Royal Naval College, so that, that pushes it back towards the Tudor Palace. Um, but what makes no sense is that it's running towards the, the Tudor jetty. So... Um, it could be some kind of stair or jetty or some kind of access um, onto the river, but it's on a different alignment to the jetty. It would butt up against the jetty, which makes no sense. Why would you have it there? Because it get in the way of boats. Um, so, yeah, so some of this is, has now been covered up and some of it has been revealed. Uh, it's still um, open and not... So this area here, is, is we can still see it. So we're, we're keeping an eye out to see if anything else comes up that may help make us understand it. Um, but since the um, rock armour has gone down, we are still getting new features. So this lovely base plate started to appear this summer during our visits. Um, again, it looks like elm. It's got this nice little mortise hole in it. Um, it's right in front of the where the rock armour has gone in. So this will wash out over the next few months. And I think um, when we go back, Next year for our field work at Greenwich, this is going to be something we're definitely going to be cleaning up and having a look at a bit more, see if we can work out what it is. We haven't had any other timbers in this area. Um, so basically what we're doing is we're building up a picture that the, the foreshore in front of the palace was quite busy, the Tudor Palace, um, with lots of different things. And this is all kind of on the upstream side of the stairs. What isn't... And, <coughs> it's starting to road out. Now, um, downstream of the stairs, the foreshore in that area is also dropping. So far, there haven't been any features there. That is also part of the palace foreshore. So the, I suspect that we will start to see features come out in over the next 10 years or so if the erosion continues. So there's going to be an ongoing job for monitoring down there, for sure. Um, sorry, just let me grab a glass of water. We've also been experimenting with some um, new techniques um, for recording and monitoring. So we've been having a go at doing some 3D recording, um, which we have been doing on our field work as well. Um, but it's a really um, quick and easy way to, to um, monitor and, and make a record of some of the things that we see. <coughs> so I'll just swap over. Hopefully this will work. So I haven't tested this. If I uh, there we go, click on this link here. Fingers crossed, everyone. Oh yes, yes. Okay, bear with me while it reloads. Here is a rather busy. Let me make it full screen. Okay. You should, if they move around, you can fly around 
This is our very first 3D model, so it's not our, our you know, the most expert one or anything, but this is just a, a view of that cl cluster of timbers that we were looking at. And we've done some more, taken some more photos of this to do another model of this. So we did this first model was about February time this year. We've done another one this summer, so six months later. So we can then you can compare and contrast the two models. So um, lots of fun, very easy to do. You don't need to be a specialist. And um, we did do a 3D modelling workshop earlier this year, and a lot of frogs I know came along to that. And I know we're overdue sending out the handouts to that, but we will get those out. Um, because I think this is a really useful and um, way for us to be thinking about doing some recording. All right, so get rid of that. Yeah. Go back to this. There we go. We move on. Hey, okay. Um, the other um, interesting um, little bit of research that we've been doing this year, this is done by one of our volunteers, Claire Millington, um, who um, sadly has moved to Oxfordshire, for those that know her. So she's not going to be coming down onto the foreshore so much. Um, but she's been taking a look at We've got an inscription on the river wall at Greenwich um, near the Trinity Hospital almshouses, so further downstream from the old Royal Naval College. Um, and it's been something that's been looked at. The Thames Archaeological Survey also had a look at it. Um, We've got two stones with an inscription, and again, I'm afraid you probably won't be able to see it too clearly. Um, there's one here, and then there's another one that goes behind a um, piece of wood that's on the, the um, wall there, so you can't see all of the second one. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to make out, but there's a few words that are clear. There's, you've got neighbours and friends. Friends spelt in our today's world wrong with an E before the I, so all the school teachers in the room look away now. Um, and then it, the, it carries on onto the next stone, um, but it obviously isn't continuous, so there must be a missing stone at least there. So it's been either reused or repaired at some point and not put back <coughs> in the same place. And then on the second line, there's a bit where, which we've always interpreted as will strangers, W-I-L-L. -L. This summer, Claire and I went, and a few other people went down, and it was a lovely sunset, <coughs> in evening monitoring and, and just because of the angles of the sun we had another look at this <coughs> and um, actually what Claire thinks is that rather than this saying will strangers, so we thought it might be some kind of phrase to welcome people to the um, almshouses we actually think that this is the Roman numerals for eight um, so eight strangers Claire's done a little bit of research about the almshouses and found that the original foundation for them were for 12 local men um, and eight strangers from Norfolk. So we think that this probably is, an, the, the carving is in situ, um, and, but has at some point the river wall's been repaired and a bit of it has been lost. Um, perhaps one of the other stones on the river wall's been turned around and put in backwards or something. Um, so, yeah, we think it must be the, the, the stone for the almshouses. So there's a little bit more work to do. The other thing that Claire's looked at is she's looked at the spelling of friends, and my autocorrect on my slide has corrected this really annoyingly. Um, and with an E and an I spelling of friends, that's quite classic for 16th century um, English. And the almshouses were founded in the 16th century. So all signs are pointing towards this being an inscription for the foundation of the almshouses. And the stairs, obviously, um, would have been the main access to the almshouses when they were built in the 16th century. Um, so, yeah, nice little bit of research there. All right. Okay. So now I'm going to move on to talking about my other work that I've been doing, and the main um, work that I've been doing for TDP, which is our Engaging Older Londoners project. Um, so... Um, it's funded by the City Bridge Trust, who are a foundation who were formed. It's a charity that gives grants out um, across London for working with various different target populations. Um, they, um, their money comes from the fact that they own a lot of the bridges in London, so, um, and they use that, that money to, to, to support their charitable work. Um, we've got three years of funding, running until February 2019 now, so we're about halfway through, um, to engage older Londoners with the archaeology of the Thames foreshore. So 
Um, I'm do we're doing a variety of different things to do this. Um, so some of it is um, what we've been doing well already for TDP. So we're doing frog volunteer training. So um, this is Jane with, um, I can't remember the other girl's name, sorry, um, working um, on the foreshore of the city. Um, and we've trained several um, older people as frogs this year. We've been doing lots of workshops and talks. Um, some of these are public ones. So this is our research workshop that we did earlier this year. Um, we've, um, I've been going out and doing lots and lots and lots of talks um, for older Londoner groups across the city. So people like um, the University of the Third Age. And I know there's people in the room who've um, been to talks that I've done um, for you free a groups and for those of you that don't know the University of the third age um, they are um, they're locally run groups um, for older people um, and they do all sorts of stuff they have special interest groups they do have walking groups they have sports groups they have language classes um, and they um, also do projects as well um, and one of those I will come along and talk about a bit more in a minute. We get really great feedback, and this is something that somebody said to me at the end of a talk I gave a couple of weeks ago. He said, thank you, that gave the old grey matter a proper workout. It's given me lots to think about. It's really satisfying to go and have that kind of, you know, know that you've given people something interesting and a bit different. Um, we've been doing lots of events. Um, a couple of weeks ago we had, um, we hosted a tea party, something we've never done before, um, at uh, Mortimer Wheeler House. Um, we... Um, are doing an oral history project about remembering the Thames. Um, so we called it the Remembering the Thames event. We had on display lots of photographs and artefacts um, from the river. Some of it's within living memory, but we also took it right back. So, you know, our artefacts go back a couple of thousand years. Um, it was a part of um, an event called Silver Sunday, um, which is um, where they organise free events for older Londoners across, well, older people across everywhere, really, but it started in London. Um, and we had about 20 people come along and, and had tea and cake and had a right old natter. And we've met a couple of people who will want to get involved in our oral history project and we'd like to interview about their experiences. Um, one gentleman said this, um, I enjoyed seeing a 1947 photo of children at Tower Bridge Beach, which my mum used to take me to, and, and meeting some of the fine people and marvelling at their dedication to the Thames. Um, we had quite a few frog volunteers come along as well um, who've been involved in our oral history project. <coughs> to talk to people and then I think quite a lot of the attendees really enjoyed having a chat with our volunteers about what our volunteers get up to as well so it was a great great event and it's so, certainly something that we'd like to repeat um, doing lots of walks again taking groups down on the foreshore and also opening up our public walks and, and advertising those more as being accessible for older people um, we've also started doing riverside strolls so we know that getting onto the foreshore can be a problem for people um, and there's not a lot we can do about that because they're not going to be putting nice wheelchair lifts in and stuff anytime soon. Um, and there's, you know, the foreshore surface itself is pretty uneven and can be hard to walk on. Um, so we've started to do riverside strolls. So picking sites where you've got good view of the foreshore at low tide um, from the river path and from the Thames path um, and... Um, pointing out what archaeology that you can see from the Thames path and talking to people about that. Um, and then because you don't get to go on the foreshore, what we do afterwards is we go, we find a nice local venue where you can have a cup of tea um, and we get out a box of foreshore artefacts and show people some of the stuff that you find down on the foreshore as well, which is actually a really nice way to end it because then you can have a really, really nice chat with people again. People like a good cup of tea and a chat. Um, so, yeah, they've been really popular as well. Um, and if you know a group of older people who might be interested in a talk or walk, please do come and chat to me um, and let me know, because I, I'm, I'm quite happy. If they're in London, I'm quite happy to go and go out and, and visit them or, or take them to the foreshore. So, it was an inspiring morning. I was so pleased with myself of being able to walk on the gravels. I decided to walk home afterwards. And this is a lady who's got a tremor disorder. So, walking isn't always the easiest of things for her, but she was... Um, just um, you know, she decided to give it a go and see if she could, and she could. Um, so yeah, great. Um, another really great part of the project that we started to do as well is we've started to do handling sessions for people um, in residential care and also um, for dementia groups as well. Um, unfortunately, I haven't got any um, photos because it is um, it's a bit harder to take photographs of participants at those kind of activities. Um, 
but I've visited quite a few different groups in East London now, um, and it's a really inspiring session. Um, this is one of the nicest bits of feedback I've ever had. Thank you, you made me feel young again. Um, it's the best session we've ever had here. Um, and, you know, the, the um, fact that you can take some bits of old pot along and, and make somebody feel like that is, is brilliant. Um, and it's, a, it's gone down really well, partly because the sessions are very interactive and tactile, um, especially for people with dementia. Um, it's, a, um, it's a great way of engaging people regardless of their abilities. So um, some people may not be verbal um, and they may, not, may have lost their sight and stuff, but you can, you can put things in their hands that they can feel and touch so they can still get something out of the session. Um, and I've also found when you've got carers in the room as well, um, it gives people something different to think about. It sparks conversations and talking points, which is really nice. So we've had some really interesting discussions that have come off the back of just the artefacts and stuff that we've talked about. And they might not be directly related to archaeology. It could be about people's life experiences and things like that. Um, the care workers have um, really appreciated the sessions as well because it's given them an opportunity to see a different side to the people that they work with, find out a bit more about their background um, and their life history that they may, may not have known. Um, things like going to Tower Beach, um, it's always a bit of a revelation to care staff, I've found. But a lot of East Londoners of a certain age did go down to the beach at the Tower. Um, and it's you know, something a bit interesting and different to talk to people about. Um, and then one of other projects that we've been doing, and, and several members of the group are in the room, is um, the Sail to Steam Shared Learning Project with U3A members across London. So this is a short-term research project. So we've been doing it for about the last four, five months now. Um, it was a three-month focused research. Um, and what the group have been researching is um, the transition from wooden shipbuilding to iron shipbuilding with the Thames shipbuilders. I'm not going to go into huge amounts of detail because um, Sheila and Joe from the group are going to give a talk straight after me. <coughs> I'd also just like to say, um, they've all the, some of the results of their research we've put created posters for and they're on display in the lunchroom so when you're getting your lunch please do stop and have a look at them because um, they've done some fantastic work um, and it's all really fascinating um, and yeah and finally um, the oral history project um, we've um, trained up a bunch of frogs um, to talk to people about their memories of the Thames foreshore um, and we are wanting to interview um, anyone who's worked or played on the Thames foreshore, whether that's um, mudlarkers, whether that's archaeologists, whether it's rowers, whether it's boat builders. Um, so if you know anyone who um, has had um, involvement with the foreshore in the past, again, please do let me know. Um, we, um, we want to see how the foreshore has changed um, and, people's, and how people's relationships with the foreshore has changed as well over time. Um, so what have we achieved? We've reached more than 600 Londoners aged over 75 so far. We've trained three new frogs aged over 75. Um, we've done handling sessions with five dementia groups and fi at five different residential homes. We've done 14 talks and 10 walks for um, U3A groups, Parkinson's UK groups and, and other old people's groups as well. Um, and we've trained 16 frogs in oral history interviewing techniques so far. So, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.